and we are recording. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Killian. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday. Today is you know, yet another Sunday in June, but it's also Father's Day, which is a very pleasant thing. And also, if you're like me, you're very interested in things like this, it's the solstice. Or rather, it was yesterday afternoon. So this is, you know, that wonderful time of year when we're going now to the shorter days. But it's happy. It's nice. It's fun. And thank you for joining us here from wherever you are. As we always do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. To the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is that Sunday in our usual church life when we go back to green vestments. We're now in the green time, which is fun because everything else is green here in the middle of what is late spring in, in Park City. It's very fun, it's very nice, it's just, it's just delightful. So let's dive in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me, like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness and vengeance, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor, from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's children, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, Answer me. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. But the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. Lord, in your great love, answer me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, and as much as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world though sin is not accounted when there is no law. 
But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who, has, who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The spirit of truth will testify to me, says the Lord, and you also will testify. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There seems to be a discontinuity in this gospel. Fear no one, thing number one, but then fear the one who can destroy both the body and the soul, and whoever denies me, that last little bit in the end. Because on the one hand, it seems like it should be very encouraging, and it is. That's absolutely what it is, and this is what I'm going to try to kind of explain a little bit here in a second. But then we have this thing which immediately kind of undercuts it, of fear this other thing. And then whoever denies me. The point of this gospel, I think, can be very well read in this month of the Sacred Heart by looking at that which is the mercy and love of our Lord. I think that there's a very legitimate way of reading this gospel that says that the first statement, fear no one, is really very concordant with the subsequent two little moments that I just mentioned. Because if we really consider that which is the love of our Lord, that which is his mercy, that which is his very human and very woundable love, kind of an echo of which we hear in Jeremiah in the first reading, then we can also understand just the extent of how far that goes. So look at it this way. If our Lord truly loves us, and he does, <clears throat> so it's not exactly like a counterfactual hypothetical or something, our Lord does truly love us, so then if we think of that which is the bad stuff, like for example, the one who can the one or the ones or whatever or whoever can destroy both body and soul, then we think immediately of no, that is not something that's really to be feared, because the Lord really is holding us and caring for us, so much so that he illustrates this with the allegory of that sparrow. Like, you are worth more than many birds, and all the hairs on your head are counted, even for those of us who have fewer now than we used to. Still, the, the point of it is that you are so precious. You, you are, you, you who are listening, you who are there, you who hear this word of God are so precious to him that you have nothing to fear. Because the Lord will protect you. He will be with you. He will absolutely hold you in his hand and keep you from anything that could destroy body and soul. Okay, so trusting in the Lord that much, we also come to the last little bit of this gospel, which is so very, very terrifying. The, that which is to deny Christ or be denied by him. It's very much our lives to have this very stable kind of character of relationship with the Lord, one that is built on many good habits and good choices because of those habits of prayer, 
of a righteousness of life, not a self-righteousness, but an actual righteousness, that which is actually good. And having that, then we know that we are not denying Christ by any means. Again, fear no one. Do not be afraid of it. In a real way, the Lord is also telling us something very important, which is to trust yourself, which is something that we do need to hear more often. Our trust in the Lord is not just in the Lord, a third person out there, but also that which we have received from the Lord in ourselves to actually hold it and trust it. Now, I hope this doesn't seem like kind of a, a weird psychobabble, but I think this is a very important point. The love our Lord has for us is pervasive. It extends and it is grand and it is not something that can just be simply obliterated. In fact, it is something that through our lives is we are building ourselves in it. We are receiving that love, taking it, and doing something with it. This is kind of how grace grows in us. And even as we change and, you know, as we get older, this is something in us which does not get older, but in fact more excellent, hopefully, that is building into something which is more perfect, which is something which is closer to the Lord. And so we have no reason to fear these things. We have no reason to fear either that which is external to us and could injure us, or even our own faults, which could betray us, because in fact, neither of those are real possibilities. And that's something I think which is very, very hopeful, and something which I think is very well based in scripture, especially scripture like this. When we hear those words of Jeremiah, they are fantastic. They remind us of how painful life can be, especially when we feel betrayed, when we feel that we are being attacked. It's important for us to remember that our Lord is also someone who is betrayed and attacked, and someone who is betrayed and attacked by our faults, even now. Yet, even through all of that, the Lord continues his unfailing love in a way that will never, ever change. That is a constant that does not have any end. And this is a great consolation to us. Because even in those times when things don't go the way we intend, and there are many times, whether that be outside of ourselves, inside of ourselves, in our families, wherever, the Lord is absolutely there. And so, Think about this reading from Romans. It's a very terse, short reading, that second reading. But it's all about this, well, what we call, to use a fancy term, an economy. There's a plan here. And the plan is that we should have life. This is very important. Listen to the little bit of the end of it again. He's talking about, like, death and Adam and Moses and that kind of like the after the pattern of the trespass of Adam comes all of this thing, but especially after the pattern of the trespass of Adam comes the one who is to re to repair all of it, talking about Christ, and then he ends it. But the gift is not like the transgression. This is something that we should very like our ears should like really perk up about this. Because that which is what we receive from God is not like the way is not like at all the repayment for or the overcoming of sin, of evil, or whatever else. That which we receive from God does not merely cover up a, a patch. It doesn't make it doesn't just fill in a hole. It's very, very different. It heals from the inside. One that a kind of thing which really actually does grow and make perfect and heal. When we get a cut, we don't wear a Band-Aid forever. Our skin heals. The gift is not like the transgression. If we, if we have a paper cut, it's not that the paper cut is unpaper cutted, but rather that our skin heals. And it's like it wasn't even there after a time. The gift is not like the transgression. And then, and then he goes on. For if by the transgression of the one, the many died, this is talking about Adam, 
how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? So putting this into context, that which is the love and mercy of God is so overwhelming that not only are the sins individually healed, but also all the sins, the whole world. And so we hear, fear no one. There is no point in an anxiety about those things that we cannot change. Obviously, there never is. But even those things which we fear may be deleterious to our relationship with God are overcome in that which is the mercy that God shows us, that God wants to show us. God wants to show us his mercy so that we can praise him for his mercy. God wants to show us his love so we can praise him for his love. The reason why we love God is not because we are afraid of him in the sense of like some kind of um, more or less malicious, very, very powerful being who must be given praise and therefore placated. But instead, because our Lord is very, very good and wants us to enter into this relationship of love with him, a kind of relationship which then transfers to the other parts of our lives, which grows and changes and also is able to change the people around us. This is something which is fundamental to our lives as Christians and which should give us much hope. So, who or what do we fear? That which is the virtue of courage is something which is one of those gifts that we get in the Holy Spirit. That which is the, 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 the stability, the happiness, the contentment to love and be loved is something which is, aside from written into our being from the very beginning, restored in Christ, because sin will always kind of eat away at that, restored in Christ. And all we have to do is to accept that. <laughs> that which is our life in Christ is based on this, even though we perceive danger, and the danger is real. Our Lord is there to protect us and promises us his protection. There is no way for a heart that is truly aligned toward the direction of God to ever really deny him. I, I, I think this is simply not possible. It doesn't make any sense to me. And <clears throat> we may find examples in our lives of something otherwise, and they're always very sad examples. But I don't think that's the right way to understand it. I think that the direction of our lives as we build in our Christian life based on the grace of God, our love for him, which is based very much in his love for us, that there is no way to ever really step away from it. And this isn't Catholic guilt or other kinds of shame mechanisms in our lives, but rather we have been changed by it fundamentally. And that change will be forever because as St. Paul says, the gift is not like the transgression. If it were really one-to-one, -one, it wouldn't mean anything. It can't be one-to-one. -one. It has to be like an infinity-to-one gift to transgression. Otherwise, we'd always be stuck in the transgression, in the evil, in that thing which happened. Instead, our Lord desires us to move on, and not just to move on, not just to be better at being ourselves, but to be better in a way that makes us fit for life with him forever in heaven. And this is the way we understand our life with him. It's not something which is good for now, but good for all at all time. What a wonderful thing to think about. Even a Lord who is very easily capable of suffering. He himself suffers in his heart. And yet, because he is God, also that suffering is <laughs> the gift is not like the transgression, even in the, in the heart of Christ. So it is also for us. As we always do, let us bring together our prayers and offer them together to our Lord, who will hear and answer us. For all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, especially for those who have died and their loved ones, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have lost their jobs or are dealing with financial burdens, personal concerns, and other challenges in their life, 
as a result of the ongoing crisis. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the clergy of the Diocese of Salt Lake City, as they continue to shepherd our faith communities amidst challenges and the unknown, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the medical personnel and first responders who are working tirelessly to save lives and keep our communities safe, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For you and your families, that you stay safe and healthy. And for all those who are isolated and alone, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For what else shall we pray? Heidi asks that we please pray for her dad, Brent. May he remain strong, healthy, and hopeful during this challenging time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Hansen family asks that we please pray for all fathers on this day. May the Lord bring them blessings and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And he also asks that we please pray for all fathers who have passed away. Be in the loving hands of God, our Heavenly Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Sandra asks that we please pray for all the fathers who remain models for the future generations and for healing for families with unwell fathers, especially her dad, Robert. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I also pray for all fathers that they will be men who give that same message that our Lord gives us. Be not afraid of anyone, because in fact, the consolation and the courage that is given be useful to the children. We pray for fathers to truly be good fathers after the model of the sacred heart. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Bestow pardon and peace, O Lord, we pray, upon your faithful, that they may be cleansed from every offense and serve you with untroubled hearts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. I, for one, am very happy that I didn't drop my books this time. I I, we were about to drop my books. That was, that was about to happen. So, made it through this time. Really, everyone, a happy Father's Day. Let it be a, a lovely day for you. <clears throat> I hope it's a nice weather where you are and that there are hot dogs and hamburgers in your future because that's a great thing to do on Father's Day. As we always do, let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. I always say, please come and join us every day for this. And usually that is the case. This week, we're gonna be taking a couple of days off. We'll have coffee again tomorrow, tomorrow morning at the same time, nine o'clock. Then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday will be coffee on your own or 
in small family groups. Then back on Friday. Also this week, we will not be having adoration in the evenings in the church. Just wanted to mention that. Also, thank you all for coming, whether you are on Zoom or Facebook, just like whether you are in Park City or in Heber, is all kinds of dichotomies, but we're all here together and that's a lovely thing. God bless you all and have a wonderful Father's Day. See you later. Bye. Bye. Happy Father's Day, Father. Thank you, Father. Happy Father's Day.